In this video, I want to describe and illustrate the concept of active insufficiency. Active insufficiency is when a muscle tendon unit has gotten so short that it really can't contract any further and therefore it can't generate additional force. This makes the muscle look weak even though it's not really weak, it's just in a shortened position where it can't contract any further. You'll remember the idea of a muscle being so short that it can't contract any further from the active length tension curve where the sarcomeres are kind of fully shortened and the myosin heads, even though they keep grabbing and pulling on the actin, it can't get any shorter because the sarcomeres kind of butted up against the myosin and it just can't shorten anymore. So, uh, the way this happens, uh, here we have kind of an illustration of my flexor digitorum profundus. Okay, so runs from, you know, proximal to the wrist and then across the wrist, one joint, across the metacarpal phalangeal joint, that's two, across the proximal interphalangeal joint and across the distal and interphalangeal joint. So we have one, two, three, four joints that it's crossing. And then in green here, um, approximately sort of where the joints are, but anyway, um, I just have some of the uh, ligaments and pulleys that hold this thing in place so this will actually kind of work. Here we have your transverse carpal ligament. Here you have your A1 pulley. Here's your A2 pulley. And here is your A4 pulley. I didn't put them all in there because that was just too much. So you'll see if my wrist is extended or even in neutral, extended and neutral, this force, this contractile force here represented by this yellow piece of therotubing, that contractile force is enough to, you know, bring my MCP, PIP, and DIP joints into, you know, some contraction, all right? My BIP is having a little trouble with all this tape around, but anyway, you get the idea. Um, now, on the other hand, you can see that this also crosses your um, FDP, flexor digitorum profundus, also crosses the wrist. Now, if I were to bend my wrist such in, in this sort of a fashion, now all of a sudden, a lot of this contractile force from my FDP has gotten used up flexing the wrist. Once that's gotten used up flexing the wrist, there's not much left to flex the fingers anymore. So with my wrist fully flexed, my, this FDP, you know, it's going to do a little bit here, but it's not going to do a lot in terms of flexing those fingers. If my, my wrist in a straight position or in a more functional, like 30 degrees of extension position, now the contractile force here does a nice job of flexing my finger joints. All right? So we call that when I have less contractile force up here where we think of FDP working because another joint has been positioned in such a way that it uses up a lot of that contractile force. We call that active insufficiency. This doesn't mean that my FDP is actually weak. It simply means I've been positioned in such a way that it can't do its job at these joints because its contractile force has been used up at another joint. So that's active insufficiency. Uh, you can remember that active insufficiency has to do when a muscle tendon unit is actively contracting and trying to produce force. That's one way to try to kind of remember that concept. Um, the way this comes into play in uh, occupational therapy is if you're doing manual muscle testing, you want to make sure that you have positioned the other joints that a multi-joint muscle tendon unit crosses in such a way that you're not making this look artificially weak um, when acti actually you're just positioning it poorly and you should have a position like this so that it can show its strength. You can kind of figure this out on your own. If you were to um, say take a partner, you can even do it on yourself. I'm going to do it with my right arm now. 
And if you were to, in a you know, good neutral or functional grip position, squeeze, say, three fingers, you could feel that you can generate a fair amount of force. However, if you were to flex your wrist completely, keep it completely flexed, and now try to squeeze those fingers, you can generate very little force. And that is simply, again, because those extrinsic, that is proximal to the wrist, extrinsic muscle tendon units, when they cross the wrist and you have your wrist flexed, they don't have much left to flex the fingers. The same thing will happen with the extrinsic extensors, extensor digitorum, extensor indices, uh, extensor digiti minimi, or any other multi-joint muscle tendon unit, like biceps, triceps, hamstrings, quadriceps. I uh, have to think about active insufficiency with all multi-joint muscle tendon units.